G'day everybody, Spud here from Spud's Games. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video, I'm gonna be running you through the PVM that I picked up the other day. Stay tuned. First up, let's talk about the monitor. So it's 14 inches, uh, part number is a Sony PVM 1442QM. The 14 in it stands for uh, the 14 inch model and the PVM stands for Pro Video Monitor. Now as for specifications, uh, sits at about 600 TBL, which is sort of mid-range for a, a PVM. Uh, and if I was comparing it to other monitors, it's the same TBL count as a Commodore 1084. Um, they use different technologies, but the same TBL count. Now on the back of this one, we've got some RGB inputs, both digital and analog, which is handy. It has a composite input, uh, it has an S-Video input, and also has a VTR input, which is essentially just composite, just with a, a fancy ass plug that Sony sort of uh, used a lot for their camcorders and VCRs, etc. So I actually picked up two of these, well, they were two PVM, slightly different models. The other one's a 1444QM. The difference between the two is the 1444, rather than have digital and analog RGB, it has analog RGB and components. Now that component only does 480i, not 480p. Uh, but that's other than that, the, the specifications are exactly the same. So I'm not going to open both monitors up. I'm just going to open the 1442 up. Uh, they're essentially the same thing anyway, so the only difference is slightly, like the video board's a little bit different. So we'll have a look inside, we'll have a look at the video board, we'll have a look at the power board, we'll have a look at the main board, we'll have a look at the tube, uh, and just give you guys a general feel about what's inside these PVMs. Now I'll also run you through the fault that I found, or the fault that incurred, which is the vertical collapse, and how I fixed it, how we found the fault, and also too, we'll look at setting up the geometry. So let's get this baby opened, and once I get her opened, we'll, uh, we'll go from there and we'll take a look inside. So before we open her up, let's just take a look around the monitor itself. Let's grab the camera off the tripod, tripod, and move it around. So we'll have a look at the buttons at the front. Now we've got some indication there whether we're in, we're in PAL, CCAM, NTSC, etc. We come through, we can do blue only, we can do under scan. And then we've got the, um, the RGB select, whether it's analog or digital, and um, then we move across, we can do our you know, red, green, blue gains and uh, bias. And then we just got the colour and volume adjustments, etc. Followed by the main power button. We look up there to come up here to Trinitron, Trinitron, sorry, super fine pitch. It is a mono speaker as well, it doesn't have one on the other side. So it's mono uh, sound. Interestingly, it doesn't have any handles on the side. Most PVMs this size, you might see handles on the side here, but this one doesn't have it. Come around to the back. And you can see the inputs on the back. So we've got the composites up the top there, loop in, loop out. S video in the middle there. Now, interestingly, that doesn't have a loop out. And we've got the VTR next to it, which is essentially camcorder VCR connection over composite. We've got the uh, digital RGB, and then down the bottom we've got the analog RGB, which is loop in, loop out. We can also do some adjustments there on, the, on the, those little dials. And also pick the colour temperature. We can have sort of a warm colour temperature, or a, or a bluey sort of more, I suppose, um, tungsten sort of uh, colour temperature. So that's it from the outside. I'll put the camera back on the tripod tripod and we'll, um, we'll open her up. So to open this up it's quite easy. Uh, there's just some screws here on the side, missing a couple of screws so I just haven't put them back in yet from when I opened it up before. So there's three on this side, three on this side and there's, there's uh, four on the back. Now it may appear um, there's more on this but there's essentially only four you have to um, undo and if I just spin this around I'll show you what I mean. Now see here, see all the screws up here and around the side here, they actually don't have to be undone. Um, it's only, there's two here which hold the video board up against the, the shell itself and the two main screws which are here and here which hold the back of it on. The, all of these screws here do, they're just fixing, the, holding this plastic up against this metal um, outer shell. So once I undo the screws that I need to, this whole piece will come off including this plastic back outer shell. Come around, we've got the fly back there. 
and we've got the main board underneath that sits on the floor there of the chassis. We've got the video board down here. So you've got the neck board as well. Come across and this is the power board over here. The good thing about these PVMs, this is probably not the best example of it, but all these boards are pretty modular. So it's just a matter of unclipping it, like for instance this video board. I'll just come around to this side, hopefully you guys can see that. There's a little clip down here. Now you unclip it here and unclip it on the other side. It lifts the whole board up. If hopefully I can get a picture there. And you undo some um, cables there, some ribbon cables. Just plugs and that, and that whole board just pops out. Now the same as the power board, it's quite easy to do. Just a couple of screws on the, on the back side to fix it to the chassis, undo that. The whole board just lifts up and out. You just got to make sure you undo, so there's some earth cables here, got some ground cables, main power cable, and over the other side we've got the, the gas and also the, the switch cable there as well. So you undo them and that, that whole board comes away. Uh, the board, the main board is a little bit more difficult to come out. Um, there's a lot of connectors as you can see. I can zoom in and get the right spot. Up the front there you've got to undo. Um, and there's obviously you've got your you got your main connectors up to your neck board and your high voltage etc so there is a couple more you have to undo on the, the main board to get it out it's not too complicated probably takes five or ten minutes but it, um but yeah, yeah that's, that's it hopefully that gives you a good look inside now the issue i had with the vertical collapse i'm not going to pull the whole board out and show you um, but what i will show you is a couple of things so first up when i opened up this after a pop i found that there was a capacitor going you can see that fairly new black and um, white capacitor there. That was what I found at pop. Now I had no real relationship to the, the vertical collapse. That's because that's actually the horizontal section of the board. Okay, and if I zoom in up here, you can probably actually see it's labeled you know, horizontal deflection. I don't know if we can zoom in there, but um, because it's in the horizontal section, it probably didn't uh, marry up to the vertical collapse that I was getting. Now the vertical section is up the back here next to these pots. So these are your geometry pots, which I'll uh, run you through later on. And there's an IC here. So in, on that, on the picture, it's an EC, um, integrated circuit board or circuit chip here. So that does your horizontal and vertical synchronization that chip. So it's pretty important. And what I found is, and I'll run you through the schematic before, but there was a couple of voltages that was missing, one in particular, and that then pointed to a dodgy. 12 volt regulator, which is up the front there. You can see a heat sink behind that orange coil. The 12 volt regulator is actually on the back of that. So the, the, the power for this IC, the vertical section of this IC down here is actually a fair way away from the, um, from the regulator. So um, I'll run you through the schematic of what I found with the issue, as well as uh, a video of the, the dry solder joint or cold solder joint. All in all, this PVM is really clean. There's, there's hardly a speck of dust inside. A um, bit of a pleasure to work on. It was, I said, a bit of a pain. It's not the easiest PVM I've seen or worked on, um, but it was nice and clean. So that's it for the internals. I'll go and grab the schematic and I'll show you what I was talking about with the, um, the vertical collapse. So on the left here, we have the CRT schematic. On the right here, we have the details of the vertical horizontal IC that I showed you in the previous video or the, the bit before on this video. Uh, it's an NEC UPC 1377C chip. It's combined horizontal uh, vertical chip. Now obviously my issue was around the horizontal, uh, sorry, vertical section. I come down to the block diagram. That's these terminals here on the IC and if I come up here it's these ones over here. Now the first thing to do was pointed out to me was make sure I had 12 volts on pin 21, which is the main voltage for the vertical, vertical part of the IC. So come down here, just confirms that on the block diagram. And when I measured the voltage here, it actually read 0.04 volts. So straight away I knew I had a problem with the voltage. So if I trace the line back, and there's a couple of points there could be a problem. One might be this resistor here, open circuit. One might be this coil, could be this capacitor, or it could be the regulator itself. Now, as I showed you, uh, in the little bit before that the 12 volt regulator and the IC are nowhere near each other. This is right at the front of the TV, this one's right at the back of the TV. So 
Just because they're close on the schematic does not mean that they're close on the board. Now I went through and I pulled these components out of circuit, tested them individually, they all tested fine. Put them all back into circuit, I was desoldering this particular chip here and as you can see down the bottom I knocked it with my solder pump and I wasn't expecting this but all three prongs moved. Now you clearly see this is a cold solder joint. I thought I'd go ahead and pull it out of circuit anyway and just give it a test and it tested fine. There was no shorts um, you know, and the resistance was fine. Indicated that the regulator was fine. So I popped it back into circuit and the rest is history because it fired up fine. Right, so now let's have a look at the geometry on this. It's not, it's, it's okay actually, it's not perfect, but it's certainly, um, it's not too bad. We'll, um, we'll make some adjustments and see how good we can get it. I'm just going to do this by eye. Um, now, as I just said before, and as I said, sorry, previously, the, the, all the pots you probably need to do the adjustments are at the back. You do need to open it up, it's all analog, doesn't have an OSD, this particular BVM. So, uh, what I'll do is I'll just pop up a photo of the dials that I'm using in the corner there. And also a little bit from the service manual um, that you'll be able to pop up in the corner there just to show what the dials I'm going to be using are. The first one up um, it needs to be fixed up horizontally. First of all, so let's just give that a bit of a turn. That's the width. Position of this one. Let's try and get that nice and in the middle before I... I'll just I'll probably overscan it out a bit. Not too bad there. And we'll just the... Um, We'll hit the width. Try to scan that out a touch. Not too bad. No. Just the position again a little bit. That's okay. Now the height also needs adjusting. Now I've just got to remember which one's the height. I think it's this one here. The height. Yeah, yeah, we'll just take it up a little bit and make sure it just over out a bit again. Nice and even. That looks pretty good. Touch wavy at the top. If I'm looking at the little red lines meeting the white lines, it is a little bit, comes in at the top of a, a fraction, but overall that's, that's really, really good. The convergence is good there. Uh, for me video games, you know I'm not a I'm not a, a screen purist, you know, if it's they're not bad enough for me to notice playing video games and I don't worry too much about it. Oh, well that's that's pretty good. I'm not sure how that's coming up on the camera. I'm assuming it's looking alright. Um, but it's it's better than what it was. I'm not gonna muck around too much more with it, you know I don't want to put it all out of whack. Um, I'm just gonna whack a video game on now just to check that it's all okay. Um, and if it's all okay, then I'm just going to leave it. So now we're just going to have a look how it looks during the game. One thing I have noticed is the brightness on this is a little bit, a little bit high. Looking at that, that's pretty good. Like I can't, you know, I can pick that. There's, I can't see any issues there. So I'm, I'm, I'm a video game player. I'm not a a video purist, so you know, if it's not affecting my video game playing, it looks nice and straight. Now, one thing I have noticed is the brightness. I like my brightness down quite a bit, so I'm just going to turn this down and hopefully it should bring out the colours a little bit more. The, the black is a little bit blacker now rather than a sort of glowish grey. I think that's pretty good. I might just give another game a go. Um, you know, I might throw in a, a shooter, I think. I might even put it in, this is in 60 hertz, I might even put a 50 hertz shooter on just so I've got the borders and just check the borders on it. So I've just popped the power game on now. So I've got borders, a little bit of border top and bottom. It looks, that looks pretty good. Uh, 
Oh, I've got, got full picture on the screen, doesn't look bowed at all. I'm sitting in front of it, it looks, it looks really good. You know, and if I'm playing this, I'm not going to sit here, I'm not sitting here thinking, geez, my geometry's out at all. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with this. I'm just going to leave it, I'm not going to muck around with it too much more. Um, like I just don't. Anyway, I'm going to turn it off now and just uh, do a quick summary. That's it for me guys. Thank you very much for watching the video. Hopefully it wasn't too technical. I didn't want to make it too technical, but I also wanted to run you through uh, what could have been a very complex repair. It was very simple if you just know where to look. Now admittedly, I got some help from the guys from CRT Collective. Um, you now I just didn't want to jump in and there's a million components in these things. And just to start changing things willy-nilly, it would take it forever. Uh, but some guidance and you know someone to point out, hey, check this first, check this first. Uh, it was certainly helpful. So, uh, always recommend check the schematic. Don't always assume it's capacitors. Um, although capacitors do fail, yes, um, it's not always the capacitor. And this certainly this instance is a capacitor. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, stay tuned for more. I've got more pickups coming. I'm heading out in the next couple of days with some more big bundles on the way. So, and I, I'll have some more satin games um, to run you through as well. So. Thanks very much for watching and uh, until the next video, I'll see you then.